for Heaven to Woman today. Are you ready to go, Karen? I'm ready. Thank you. You're welcome. So for Evans to Woman today, I'm LDB. I have Karen Copan with Karen Intensive or Intensive Karen. And Karen is an Evanston woman. She is a medical professional and she has this wonderful service that she provides for everyone. You don't have to be an older age or after 55 or 75. This is actually a family type of or for, for community of people who need to learn a little bit more about your service for their loved ones and themselves. So Karen, why don't you take it off and tell us a little bit more about what you do. Great, thanks. Uh, right, I provide a service where I actually sit down with people in their homes or now over video, over the internet, and help them put their plan for how they wanna live before they die. So <laughs> it's a way of looking at advanced care planning and making choices about your health care before um, you have to make those decisions in real time. Mm -hmm. And as you see right now, the healthcare professional, and this is your, and you're in this arena, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're seeing more of this now um, and the importance behind it. So one of the services that you offer is advanced directive. And people do have never, they're not familiar with the term. It's not an everyday term we use. Mm -hmm. So can you please let us know what that service line is and what an advanced directive is? Sure. Uh, if, if you think about um, being able to express what you want at a time when you can't speak for yourself, this is what an advanced directive provides. Um, I think of patients that I've cared for that have been suddenly unable to speak. So maybe someone's had to have an emergency surgery or they've had seizures or uh, they've been in an accident, you know, and they might need the support of a breathing machine. They're unable to really say what they would or wouldn't want for themselves if they were facing life-threatening decisions. And so in preparing an advanced directive, you think about someone that you really trust and that you think would be able to speak for you if you couldn't do that for yourself. It could be a family member or a friend. Um, if, you, if you don't have this type of decision made in the first place uh, for yourself, um, there is a, an act, the Surrogacy Act, and that names someone who will make decisions for you. But it's always nice to have the choice to be able to pick someone who you would like to speak for you. So that's one part of having an advanced directive is having someone that you trust that you know is going to have your back and be able to speak for you and speak your wishes and know those in the event of an emergency. Then the second piece is that person has to know exactly what it is that you would want or not want for treatment. They'd have to be able to get um, look at your medical records. They'd have to be able to maybe get to your financial records if needed to apply maybe for Medicare or for some type of service or to move you from one facility to another facility. Mm -hmm. And you're um, naming that person as your power of attorney for health care and then talking to them about your wishes. They are able to do those things for you. So it's like two pieces. You have to name someone that you trust that can speak for you, and then you have to make sure that they know what your wishes are. Mm -hmm. um, would you want to be placed on a ventilator? Would you want to have a feeding tube and have um, nutrition through a feeding tube? Um, you know, what, what were to happen if you were not going to recover and be yourself again? You know, what if you had a very traumatic brain injury and you would spend out the rest of your days in a facility? Is that something that you would want for yourself or would you have other choices? Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, when the time comes that you do pass, what, what do you want for yourself? Would you like hospice to be involved? Would you like a burial or cremation? What would your service be like? All of these things you can think about beforehand and just plan that out to the best that you can. So when the time happens, um, it, it's already taken care of. I really think because of the climate that we're in now, I believe that people in general are now taking a step back and thinking about these kind of things yeah. because you hear so many stories in the media right now of we were unable to 
see him. We were unable to this. We were unable. We had no clue. So the important thing is here in the advanced directive, it's, it's actually several things compiled into one. It's called an advanced directive, which you have a power of attorney. Mm -hmm. You also have a living will. And then the other form you have is the DNR and P-O-L-S-T. Now that's two different forms. And so you hear a lot the word DNR right now, of course, in the media, due to our climate. So, but this is a part of the whole package. So it's important not just to have one piece, is to have all the elements. So um, how important is it to have a DNR or a POLST? Right. Um, well, the DNR is a do not resuscitate order. Mm -hmm. It's an order written in your chart in a hospital setting. If you do, if you don't want CPR performed, if your heart were to stop or if you were to stop breathing, mm -hmm. the POLST, that's a provider order for life sustaining treatment. That's something that we use in the community. It's also an order that's written that states what you would want to happen if your heart were to stop or you were to stop breathing, as well as other choices about some of the things I mentioned earlier, maybe feeding tubes. It's a, it, it has a lot of information on it. One is used in the hospital and one's used in the community setting. So those orders are not always applicable until there's a situation that happens. So if I'm 38 years old and I have kids at home and I were to be in an accident and something happened with my breathing, I would not want to be, this is my own um, thought that I would not want to have a DNR in that circumstance. I would want everything done to save my life so that I could then go back to living my life with my family and my kids. If I had a terminal diagnosis of cancer and um, I had metastasis to many parts of my body and I knew that my life was shorter than I, um, you know, if I, if I knew realistically that my life might end within six months or a year. In that situation, I don't know that I would want to have CPR because that's not going to cure my cancer. Mm -hmm. So there are different times when DNR um, should be in place. And Anytime a patient comes into a hospital, we're obligated by law to ask if you have an advanced directive, do you have someone to speak for you? Do you have these things written? And if you have a DNR order in place, then we'll note that in the chart. If a situation happens where it is possible that your life may be threatened because of the illness or injury, we'll have the conversation and ask. Um, if, you know, in these circumstances, uh, you know, what are your thoughts about resuscitation? Or if the patient can't speak, the physician or nurse practitioner or physician assistant, they may have a conversation and say, the chances of survival are not very good and, and we would not recommend CPR in this situation. And so then they would write the order for a DNR. Okay. So... You know, some people might might already know. I don't want any of this stuff. I don't want machines. I don't want all that. Um, but it's, it it is important to be open to hearing the conversation and understanding what it is that you're saying you don't want or you do want before those situations happen. So people naturally are curious and they want to know more information or get a better understanding. And I do encourage our community and everyone to get this in order. I mean, I'm, when we first met, I was like, okay, I will look into that later. It's a later thing, right? It's like working out. <laughs> but now it, I'm really thinking about, okay, I really need to take a look at this. This is important because we are living in, uh, you know, in a time where things, epidemics happen, life happens, and I encourage people to start taking a look at this. I'm actually going to talk to my parents about this because I know they have a couple of things in place already, but I don't believe they have 
the advanced directive. And that encompasses everything. And that's a peace of mind because you know you have everything in order and you're prepared. And I like to be prepared. I like security. So I like to be prepared. So um, Karen, I know you've been practicing um, in the healthcare arena for many years. And uh, what made you bring this to the forefront, the service? Um, yeah, well, I've, I've been practicing over 30 years now. And what I see often is families completely stressed out having to make decisions that they wish they would have had an opportunity to make a long time ago. And, and the guilt and the burden and the uncertainty if they're doing the right thing, they don't know. And instead of just being there with the person and not having all of that on their shoulders, you know, I, I thought, how can I make this better? Because it's kind of, it's almost too late in the, in the setting where I see my patients. These conversations should have been had a long time ago. And then I thought, well, I can start telling the community about the kinds of decisions they might face one day. Mm -hmm. And I can educate everyone about what happens in a hospital setting and I can help you get prepared. And some people are going to say, ah, I don't need that stuff now. I'll deal with that when it happens. And others might think, you know, this is something that sounds good. Anyone 18 or older can have this and, and change it as your life changes. You know, you might be a, a young person and think, you know, oh my gosh, if that was me and I got in a, you know, an accident or something happened to me, my folks really don't know what, what's important to me, what I value, what I would want. And maybe I should put something in writing, you know, would I want to donate my organs? Would I want, you know, things like this don't come up in, in normal conversation. And okay. It's food for thought. Wonderful. Well, I think it's I think it's very nutritional. Or for food, nutritional. This is what you have is a really great service, and I appreciate you taking that to the forefront and just plunging with it and educating people the importance behind it. You're also going to be a speaker at the upcoming Family Fitness Health and Wellness Expo. Yes. So cross our fingers that we're doing it May 23rd at the Robert Crown Center. Mm -hmm. So people can actually come out and meet with you and speak with you and ask any questions you're actually going to actually have a speaking time there. But yes. for the meantime, what is your website, Karen? Uh, my website is intensivecaren.com. Okay. And I encourage everyone to look Karen up, intensivecaren.com. Mm -hmm. She is here um, in the Evanston area. She's been in practice for over 30 years in the medical industry, healthcare industry, and very smart, intelligent, I mean, you're very skillful. I've enjoyed every conversation I've had with you. you. Um, you're very insightful and comforting. So definitely, I encourage each and one of you to look up her service, and I'm going to do it as well um, to really sit down with you now, Karen, and have a meeting with you about this because it's very important. Um, and I thank you for spending your morning with us. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. Any way I can get the word out to people, I, I'm, I'm very grateful. Okay, perfect. All right. Have a good morning. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.